police officers cops of Reddit who solved paranormal cases getting calls because of paranormal disturbances. What actually happened? We once received a report of either a fox or a werewolf standing a busy street corner in town. Tragically, neither was found. I took a few criminology courses in college. One of my professors was a retired local cop. He told us about an older woman who would call weekly because aliens were jumping around on her roof. They would send out an officer. The officer who went usually just stood outside in her front yard waving his baton and yelling at the aliens to go away until the old lady was happy. We had a woman complaining of ghosts in her attic. And after checking for animals and other unwanted guests, she still was adamant about there being ghosts up there. To solve this. Another officer went to his patrol car and got a LIDO gun, radar gun that's more accurate due to using lasers, spun around while making it beep constantly, then confidently told the old lady you should be fine mom, I'm not picking up the presence of any spirits. She fully accepted that we carry paranormal activity equipment and was completely put at ease. It was a fun time. I had a funny one where a woman was making dinner for her husband. Getting it back ready in the microwave. He wasn't supposed to be home for another hour or so. She came back down to the kitchen and what she was heating up was gone. Same with the cutlery she left out. She called 911 and said there was either a ghost or someone broken and stole her husband's reheated leftovers. We went and found the husband out on the deck enjoying his meal thinking his wife had already left so he didn't bother looking her. Innocent story that had good timing for it to happen. I'm late to the party. I was dispatched to a report of a woman who claimed that there was a flying saucer hovering near her house. I query our database and she had no previous history of delusions or mental health issues. I head on over. It's in the affluent part of town. I walk over and talk to the woman. It's about midnight at this point. She seems totally normal and tells me she must be going crazy but there was a giant flying saucer. She points in the direction and I agree to check it out. I'm driving towards the area, which is totally remote with a mix of forests and farmland on the outskirts of town. I suddenly see this blinding light in the sky. I look up and guess what I see? A flying ducking saucer with all its lights on full blast. So there I am in my cruiser thinking what the duck and then I see it. The UFO is suspended by a crane and they were filming a movie. I work on a university. Got a 3am call of a haunted dorm room. Girls were in tears. They googled instructions for a home exorcism. Made homebrew holy water. Crosses and photos of Jesus plastered all over the walls. They said they would hear things like footsteps. A child's laughter. A whispering voice saying hey can you hear me? As we interviewed them. We heard it once. They screamed and burst into tears. There are. Bless his heart. Tried to help by offering the advice that at least the ghost wasn't threatening or malicious and probably meant us no harm. We asked him to leave rather than feed into the whole hysteria. Took us a while to pin down where it was coming from but to make a log story short. Someone took one of those novelty motion activated prank things and stuck it to the inside of one of the bed frames. When we were done, we asked the girls if they minded if we disposed of the thing. To which they enthusiastically agreed. And we promptly hid it in our dispatcher's locker and watched the cycle continue. P. Worked mental health assignment for a few years. Had a call from a family of a man running around naked all around the neighborhood screaming that he had been abducted and had the knowledge of the ages or some such nonsense. We get there and get the guy contained and clothed and start trying to get some type of story out of him besides him being just out of his mind. He mentions that he had received a large court settlement the week before from a work related injury and that's why the aliens took him. For his money. It's not super uncommon for there to be some truth to these stories so we go to the guy's wife to talk to her. She confirms that he had in fact received a very large settlement a week prior. No history of drug use. No history of mental illness. He just lost it. She then proceeds to ask us how she can go about accessing the money legally since he obviously had gone off the deep end. That's a little strange. We take Guy to the hospital and they do their normal panel of tests. Turns out the guy had a near fatal dose of some type of poison. I can't remember what it was, which generally will kill you. Detectives get involved. Wife ends up getting arrested for attempted murder. Guy made a full recovery too was called in because of a flash of light seen in the sky. 
turned out to be swamp gas from a weather balloon that was trapped in a thermal pocket and reflected the light from Venus. I was working in a call center for a major phone company. The guy sitting beside me got a call from an older woman who said there were little men climbing out of the wall receptacle. He asked if the men were wearing blue or green hats. The lady responded green. Excitedly. Probably because someone finally knew what she was talking about. He then said. The green men are the responsibility of the utility company. Call them. I'm not a police officer but I run a community mental health program that works with individuals that have psychotic spectrum disorders. One woman we work with told us about a man who would visit her each morning and sing hymns to her that no one else could see or hear. She really rather appreciated it. The more our worker spent time with her, though, the less she saw of him until ultimately he never showed up anymore. Basically, she had lived isolated four years before. And I believe her brain gave her this guy as companionship. Once she had our support, she no longer needed him and so he faded away. Kind of sad. This was 3 weeks ago. I was responding to a call around 3am made by a woman who said there was a thing in her house. She apparently sounded terrified and was hiding in her closet. When we got to the house, we found the door cracked open. We heard clattering noises as we walked up. But as soon as we creaked open the door, it went silent. All the lights were off. So we turned on our flashlights. My partner went upstairs to find the woman. I walked into the kitchen to find a whimpering dog with his intestines spilling out into a pool of blood. It was smeared all over the kitchen. And there were handprints everywhere. I heard a crash coming from the other room. The guy had broken a window and climbed out. I had to chase him through 6 or 7 blocks before he collapsed and started seizing. By the time paramedics arrived, he was gone. Autopsy revealed a massive overdose of PCP, meth, and bath salts. But that, that was a zombie. Repost of a previous comment from me. Canadian paramedic here. We recently attended a woman who had run into her neighbor's house at 3am. Screaming that she was being haunted. We talked to her while the police went through her house. Apparently she had been on the computer when her blinds opened themselves. While she was up looking at the blinds her computer chair spun itself. She ran back over to her computer and found that something had put gum on the seat. Not the most threatening item. But she was panicked. The police had found nothing, no gum, and we decided that they would take her someplace safe for the evening. We were just pulling away from the scene when the cruiser pulled up next to us. Turns out the back seat was haunted as well, and she ended up taking a ride with us to a comfy hospital bed. The house went up for sale that week but never sold. We went back recently and she was just getting ready for alcohol treatment. So problem solved. When I was 21 I worked at a gas station in the middle of the night. I had a lot of cops come through, just to check in occasionally and get coffee. One cop was really into paranormal stuff. We used to talk 4 hours about that it. He was in his 50s, but used to do be really into investigating the paranormal when he was in college. He was a really nice man who always dropped by every shift we shared to say hey. In my neighborhood there had been a string of robberies where the guy snuck in through the car wash. There's usually a door in there that will lead to the back room of the store. He wanted to check what our layout was. So I was showing him around. And he started telling me that he always got a weird feeling when he was there. Like he knew something paranormal was happening. He stopped in the middle of the stockroom and said like it just got really cold. Right here. It's so different. I didn't have the heart to tell him he was standing right under the air vents. Not me but my dad used to be a policeman in the UK. Retired now. He told me a story when I was a kid and still remember it. He was out on the beat way back when. Early 90s or so. And him and his partner hear a call from dispatch on the radio. Not sure if dispatch is correct but hey. That a girl who lived alone in a small house converted into two flats was hearing noises from upstairs. Which was not occupied and had not been for some years. At the time he was close by. As was a canine unit. Who got there before they did. The canine unit had this dog called Floyd who was famous for being completely fearless to the point of madness. So they go up the stairs to the door with Floyd and kick the door down and send Floyd in. But as soon as he stepped over the threshold he stopped dead. Hackles raised and started whimpering. He tried to go back downstairs but the dog handler threw him into the room where he was just terrified and would not move. 
the flat was empty apart from a few boxes and a children's cart, which had a mobile hanging above it, not phone kind, toy kind. The mobile was turned on and moving making musical sounds. Once help a group of kids in a green van investigate ghost sighting at an abandoned amusement park. Turns out it was the park owner in a ghost mask trying to pull their insurance scam. Can't explain the talking dog though. Edit. Spelling. Had a lady used to call all the time. Say there were people in her house. She would make up bizarre stories like someone came in and had a shower etc. Some money was missing from her handbag. I'd only been working in the area for about a month and I'd taken probably 15 calls from her. Anyway eventually I ducked cracked cause it was eating me. We have some cameras you can set up so I put one in a tree facing the front door. Lo and behold. Her neighbor walks in the house. Comes out about 15 minutes later with wet looking hair lol. From around 2005. My mom's friend was a dispatcher. One day she gets a call from a screaming man that a ghost had stolen his D. He was screaming loudly and yelling obscenities at her that she better send the duck in Ghostbusters squadron to get his D back. Then he offers her a date if she gets his D back from the D ghost. Apparently it was an internal call to test her ability to keep calm and retrieve as much information as possible from difficult or hysterical caller. I don't know if I believe it but it's a funny story. Not a police officer, but I do nuisance removal as a side job. Lady was convinced there were voices in her attic. And strange sounds throughout the day. Phone noises. Clinking dishes. Rattling shades. Modem. Car noises. Etc. She had called the cops but they found nothing and referred her to look for a pest control guy. Turns out it was a liar bird. Somebody must have owned one and it got out. Then nested in her attic. Sent the guy to the zoo. Patched the hole. Those birds are phenomenal. Mimics. Here's another. I think that's from the Sydney Zoo. Construction noises. News report. An uncle of mine is a retired sergeant with a large sheriff's office. In retirement he took up bodyguard work. Ended up working for a lady who came from big money. Anyway. He and my aunt live on her property in a fully furnished home and protect her from aliens. I it you not. She is terrified of being abducted. Makes no claim to have even seen aliens. However. It's her number one fear. And since she has the resources. She pays for round the clock protection. Apparently she is a very warm and kind woman who in most aspects of life is fairly balanced. Needless to say, my uncle has so far enjoyed his retirement. Edit. I can't spell. Astronomer here not a cop. Obviously. But in a reverse of this question I did talk about paranormal stuff with one the summer I worked at the SETI Institute. A big science research institute in California devoted to extraterrestrial life. I was with a group from work heading back from the Allen Telescope Array. And we were pulled over as the driver was speeding. The trooper asked us what we were from, and when we said we were doing a summer internship at SETI ETC the guy started talking about his cousin in Texas who saw lights in the sky from aliens. It was awkward as he was so stern until that moment. But someone brazenly said sorry, we only look for real aliens. Which made us all laugh. Cop included. So we got off with a warning. It was definitely an interesting summer. Colon. Not a cop but a dispatcher. Had a woman call at 1030 at night saying there were spooky faces on her TV. With names like Matt and Amber underneath them. The calling party was convinced that Matt and Amber are ghosts and had made it into her TV. She began to get more upset the more I asked her about the situation. When I asked her to describe the gaves. She explained that one was green. And one was blue. And there was another nonsense word on the screen she had never heard before. I asked her to spell it for me. N-E-T-F-L-I-X. Turns out she had accidentally hit the Netflix button on her new smart TV her son bought her on Craigslist and it had the old owner's Netflix information showing on the screen. When I explained it to her she got even more upset advising me I don't want these filthy people's names on my television. I pay my taxes. We ended up having to send an officer to check on her. Most of the stories here have 3am, not 2am, not 4am, not midnight. 3am. Duck 3am. They're usually having some kind of episode or break with reality. Lot of mentally ill don't get the proper care they need. The cops usually have an ambulance take the patients to psych emergency care. 
the patient will be observed for a few hours day and if they are not a danger to anyone, they'll be released. I took some law enforcement classes in college and one of my teachers who was a retired cop woke up in the middle of the night and thought his wife was walking around his house. He looks off into the end of his bed and tells his wife WTF are you doing? Get back in bed. She turns to him says I am in bed. Turns out that someone broke into his house and was watching him sleep or was going to rob him. He grabbed his gun and chased him away. Obligatory not a cop. But. Soon after I moved into my current house, I met my neighbor, a nice elderly lady. She eventually confided to me that a ghost would stand outside her bedroom window and whistle. I smiled and was polite but inside was thinking she was crazy. Then one night I was standing on the balcony on the side of the house near hers and I did indeed hear whistling. Was pretty amazed. But soon realized it was frogs that were attracted by our pools making mating. Or whatever, calls. Next time I saw her I told her and she acted polite and smiled but I could tell she was thinking I was crazy for thinking that frogs could whistle. My dad is a lawyer. And when he was a law clerk, works for a judge in a courtroom. This guy sued someone for sending alien rays into his brain. The first judge who got it threw the case out for being absurd. So the guy sued the judge too. For aiding and abetting the guy sending alien rays into his brain. It went on like this through most of the circuit until it got to my dad's judge. Before the court date, my dad wrote the guy a letter and said that when he has problems with people sending alien rays into his brain, he lines his hats with tin foil and it makes the rays reflect back out and not go into his brain. And they never heard from him again. Edit. Pretty happy that my top comment is a now cute story about my dad since the prior top was me making fun of how dumb snakes are. I'm not a cop but our neighbor had to call the cops on a tenant once that lived in our basement a few years ago. He claimed that there was a woman that we kept in our storage room, which is only like 4 feet high anyway so it was insane. He also stated claimed that he heard someone getting off a sofa inside of the storage room, no sofas in there, and that he shined a light under the door and saw feet. He then proceeded to claim that he heard the door open at night time and that someone was shutting off his camera that he set up to record the person inside our storage room. We didn't call the cops on him for his absurd claims but one night apparently at like 3am he got in a fight with his wife and the cops came. We ended up telling the cops about his craziness. He had made other crazy claims and done creepy it in the past. The cops just said he probably had schizophrenia and that he should go to see a doctor and then they left. We have great cops around here. One of them chalked it up to everyone being paranoid around here. Edit. Spelling. As a young patrol officer, in Switzerland, I was paired with an older officer who told me we had to pay visit to an elderly woman. She had called police to report the destruction of her fridge by some kind of ray blasted by the neighboring shop's neon sign. But he didn't tell me the reason of her call just he needed to clarify something with her. He was a very funny guy who always managed to keep his straight face. So we arrive at her apartment and she take us to the room of the alleged incident involving a broken fridge and rays shot by a neon sign. He calmly announced her that the rays weren't powerful enough to cross the street, pass the window and hit her fridge. I was slowly losing it and had to leave the room because I could not keep a professional posture. He kept explaining her that wasn't the case and he even claimed that he had called the Polytechnic University to ensure she wasn't endangered by those rays. We then politely left the scene. Sadly, it was common to have elderly people calling for surreal reasons just to get some attention and that included someone calling 117, uh 991 for police, because she couldn't open her ISIS. Similar situation, my great grandfather had to investigate paranormal activity in the mountains of East Tennessee, way up in hillbilly country, there were tons of reports of beds shaking while the victims were laying in them, I'm thinking this was around the 1930s, he reported that they were doing it themselves. I think this qualifies, back in 1992, I got dispatched to check on an older lady claiming a ghost was trying to break into the back bedroom window of her trailer. I was skeptical about the ghost portion, but had to check on the attempted break-in. It turns out she was hammered and it was a plastic bag on a tree branch that was scraping their window. I told her we got rid of the ghost and she went back to drinking. <laughs>